Hello, people. So talk about a hectic way to start off the weekend. What's going to be a crazy weekend to begin with, with John Fester. So as of this recording, my One Piece review is up. Now, I wasn't really ex expecting the chapter to be out, considering what we found out in my manga stream. But this isn't about One Piece and this review. It's about Dragon Ball Super, manga chapter 55, and the answer to a long question of waiting for the connection of Miras when it comes to the angels got revealed and in fact he was in fact an angel himself but I love the subtle hints we got about other things related to the angels which in my opinion I hope this leads to an arc in and of itself after we're done with the moral arc that's what I felt like this was doing which I hope they go, they go along with because there's certain things that he revealed that maybe they'll have some impact later down the road in the story hopefully also, what I really liked about this chapter is not only the expansion of the world building in Universe 7, but also the laws of the angels that got revealed to us and what it means for the future, what it could mean. And we started off with a conversation between the Zai Shinkan and Whis, and I was shocked they actually did this because I thought they were going to draw this out. But it seems to me like, I, I, and the reason why I say they could revisit this at a later date is because I don't think Toyotaro would have done this unless it's got something bigger down the road. I just felt like this is something that probably would have teased us. And they've been teasing us ever since Miris' introduction. So this is the combination of all those unanswered questions finally being answered. Yes, he's an angel, it's confirmed, but there's more to it than that. According to what Daishinkan said, he was sent to Universe 7, also trained by the Great Priest. But he's also the brother of the rest of the angels, Whis and Total, so that would make sense. Pretty much goes as follows. We angels must always act impartial. Beyond that single law, there are no re restrictions. So as long as they don't side with either good or evil, they can pretty much do whatever the hell we want, which makes sense of what we saw with Whis before, where he, re after Frieza destroyed the Earth, he, re he rewound time and restored the Earth. That was out of a whim. And he had, yes, much like the, the Miris is training Goku right now, Whis has admitted he's trained Goku as well and Vegeta. But as Grand Priest mentioned, it's all to do with the fact that he wants food from Earth. So I love how they called that out. But it looks like Miris has gained a bias because it, while he was in the Galactic Patrol, and I like how Kyle mentioned this was a good way of examining the good side without actually interact, interfering. But apparently Miris did the opposite and, and he was about to do something taboo against the Angel Law and that was actually fight Moro. And he's already done that, but he hasn't gone all out. But would have gone any further else, he would have been stripped Hank as an angel, and what we come to find out also, he would have been erased. And Whis comes up with the idea, let me do this myself. While this is going on, we go to Planet Yardrat, which is pretty cool. We see Vegeta trading. We see Iroko, the escort for Vegeta, who sent him to Yardrat in the first place. He notices a ship that lands on Yardrat. It's like one of Mora's ships. However, it's another subordinate. Vegeta is in the midst of his training. You see one of the Yardratians, I believe it's Pipara, that's like zipping around the 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 spikes, the rock, the rocky spikes that Vegeta's trying to train on, he couldn't meditate properly. But it could, seems like Vegeta's got a hang on his spirit control. So that's pretty cool. He's actually advanced his training, even though he didn't look like it. He, he got it down quicker than Goku, apparently. So that's kind of cool. I like how they did that. I like how Pop, Pibara actually uses a spirit technique to actually heal Vegeta. And then Vegeta says, I could do that too. And Pi Bar is like, no, 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 no. You're not, you're not good enough for that yet. You need to learn a little bit more about that. I'm about to learn the fundamental instant transmission. I like how Vegeta's reaction is like, that's just a basic technique. Like, yeah, that's not really one of the advanced techniques. It sucks that Goku, we found out that that's the only thing Goku learned. Didn't Goku learn any other techniques while he was there? He was about to learn that, but before anything else, they were interrupted by this intruder. But to find out is that. A, a prison escapee, we see two father members with him as well. It strikes to me the most is, when you see him, he has a resemblance of Zarbon because of that headband he wears, and we find out the reason for it. It's just, I'm assuming he's the same species, the same race as Zarbon, because we find that he could also transform similar. And Vegeta is called Yuzon, and he's one of Sanga Brothers minions. I like how it was, it, we get introduced to other members of Munda League's servant Sangambo. Other than 7-3. No, he's pretty much part of it. And he's just a right way of scaling Vegeta in action. I love how Vegeta just casually puts his finger out like he's about to do something. And then out of nowhere, he just triggers a blast. Unintentional, because Vegeta doesn't know how to control his abilities yet. 
And he just obliterated one of the cities in Yardra. I love how Vegeta just does that casually. I was like, what the hell? Blast use on our warning. So that's pretty cool. And if Vegeta learns that technique, like that, I'm pretty sure. I love how Pybara just pops up with interesting transmission. Don't do that again, Vegeta, giving them the rundown. Here comes the other two members of the Fada, and Vegeta backfists them, sends them flying like it's nothing, into, to, crashing into two buildings. And then Yuzon stopping and transforms, much like Zarbon, so that was kind of confirmed. Because the moment he saw that, Vegeta's like, yeah, I've seen this trick before. And they called, despite we get the law about the angels, the rule that we got revealed, I do like how the development we got for Vegeta in this chapter, because even though he's just like ta casually tagging, Use on like it's nothing. He just back he just back fists him, sends him crashing down, taking all the hits. He actually kicks Use on at one point into a building. I like how he Use on actually used the building that he crashed into, manipulated his energy to like throw it at Vegeta. But Vegeta is like casually boom, get out of there. It, it, during the midst of this fight, Vegeta just say enough of this. I'm you're no match for me. Just stop because this is so much development for what Vegeta had. When we was on Namek the first time, because Vegeta would have killed him. That Vegeta. The old Vegeta would have killed him, no problem. Here is like trying to talk about maybe you shouldn't do this. So I like the development of Vegeta. It shows he's grown as a fighter and as a character. Before Yuzan actually kills himself, he actually mentions to Vegeta, like, oh, you should be aware that Moro is right, he's, he's targeting Earth. That's his next target. Vegeta's like, Nani, what the hell? This visit by Yuzan was done that by design to get Vegeta's a chat. Attention, so he would go back to work because if you remember the previous chapter Moro says let's look let them get back to work get them stronger so I can make a meal out of it even though I think that's going to come to back and bite him in the ass the, that was Yuzon's reason yeah I, like I said I like the world more than they give us with this Yuzon character being like a similar type of race that Zarbon is that was pretty cool they did this before on the planet Zoom with the members of the race that are similar to Pui Pui there was Manipulated by, by Barbary, so that was pretty, pretty cool to see that here. Anyway, we see Moro is like, oh, they're aware about Vegeta's growth, and he's noticed how Zangabo is shot by this. I said this before, and previous chapters, I'm going to say it again. I think Zangabo is going to be the one to fight Vegeta, just because they're building him up somewhat. He's like the right hand man. It would make sense. So this chapter, despite the angels' walls that got revealed, was more or less about. Each Moro, Vegeta, and Goku gaining new levels of strength, pretty much. And then we go to the most hype part of the chapter, where we go to like bootleg hyperbolic time chamber, where Goku and Mirrors and two months have passed already, so I knew that was going to happen. It's obvious. So the training man charge is over. We're going to get the final confrontation begin in the next chapter. So we have Goku and Mirrors before they wrap things up. Mirrors and Goku is about to go at it, and Mirrors is about to go. And Goku does mention, like, I'm going to put what I learned to use here. And you see it ignite a, the aura. I don't know what aura that is. It could be Super Saiyan or it could be Ultra Instinct. We don't know. But Mirrors is about to go into full force. But out of nowhere, Whis pu puts a stop to that and just sends them both outside the pyramid. So Whis interrupts and it's like, and Mirrors is like, Whis, what are you doing here? And I like how Whis says, training can only be just that training. You can't go any further than that. It's like your plan was to travel to Earth and do battle against Moro, even though that's taboo. They can't do that. We also find out that angels aren't allowed to fight except in training. So that makes sense of why we've never seen Whis go full force. Because if they do, the angels will be a race without a trace. So not even so even angels could be erased if that if that ever happens. And I feel like it probably won't and it, and it kind of helps it out because if Whis doesn't get step in to handle certain enemies, then the tension actually mounts and it raises up. There's actually stakes, because we would just take care of things easily, which also makes sense of why Whis didn't finish off Broly. He just avoided Broly's attacks back in the movie. And we see Beerus in his angel garb, so that was pretty cool. Moro, and then I love how Whis is like, we need to go back to the angel realm. That's been confirmed now. That a realm with the angels. I hope we get to see something more later down the road. Like I said, I feel, feel like it's setting so much up. I don't think Toyotaro would have put that in there if he won't go back to it at some point. And Goku, we literally said, Goku, which means they'll meet again, obviously. It means that Goku's on this, in this world by himself and now he has to pilot the ship back to Earth. So he could be the last one to arrive, which I think would be horrible, but 
it would make sense given the trope of Dragon Ball. Also, I do like how Vegeta passed up the opportunity to, to use instant transmission. I knew that was coming. I, I said this before. I think Vegeta's going to learn a spirit barrier technique to like block Moro's absorption technique to like prevent his life energy from being absorbed. Montage is done. We're going to get into the final battle in the next chapter, which I think that confirms that the chap the more art should be wrapped up early 2020. At least we may get some hints of the next manga in Jump Festa, but we'll have to wait and see. All in all, that was a great chapter. We learned so much about the angels, which I can't get enough about. So let me know you guys think down below. That's gonna do it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like this review for this subscribe channel for more. Dragon Ball Super, catch you guys later. Thanks guys, bye.